There's a lot of different ways to rig your camera for virtual production. I'm Greg Corson and today I'm going to show you a few ways I've found that make it a little easier, more accurate, and can even avoid damage to your camera. This is my standard camera setup. You can see it's a Sony a7R. It also has a metal camera cage, a metal top handle, a metal monitor mount, and on top of that is my Bliss Tracker. Now this works equally well for Vive trackers and pretty much any other type of camera tracker you need to mount. Unreal's nodal point calibrator does make it easier to put the tracker anywhere you like, but if you mount it correctly you can save yourself reshoots and accidental errors. The first thing a lot of people think of using is a simple shoe mount that attaches to the shoe on the top of your camera. These are nice, they're very rigid, the problem is that no matter how much you tighten them, they're well made enough that they can still turn, which is bad if you uh, accidentally bump the tracker or if you bump a cable that's connected to it. So not such a good approach. The other thing a lot of people use is a ball head. This also fits on the shoe of your camera, but again, no matter how much you tighten it, the threads are so smooth that the tracker can still rotate. That's not good. The other problem is that when you release it, even though you can put the tracker in whatever position you want, it's really hard when you tighten it back up again to get it to be exactly straight or exactly in the position you want. You really can't make small adjustments to it because every time you unlock it, it unlocks at least three axes all at once. A lot of people also try using one of these. It's called a friction arm or a magic arm, depending on who you ask. The nice thing about it is it's got actually three different joints, a ball joint on each end and a hinge in the center, and they all unlock by turning that big red knob. And that's the problem with this. They all unlock at the same time. So it makes it very difficult once you've unlocked it to ever get it exactly in the position that you want. It also has the same problem as the first two options that the tracker can easily rotate on the very well-made screw on the end. This is my new favorite device for mounting trackers. It's usually called a monitor mount. It's used to mount an auxiliary monitor to the hot shoe on top of your camera. The nice thing about this is that it has a separate pan and tilt axis on it, and they're controlled by some set screws so that you can make the mount very rigid and hard to move. Also, it has a rubber pad and a screw, and once it's screwed down tightly, there's no way for the tracker to rotate on the end of the screw, as you can see. So accidentally bumping the tracker or one of its cables won't knock everything out of alignment. Also, you can adjust this in the X and the Y, or pan and tilt, independently. And the two axes are very tight, so they're not going to move by accident. All this makes it very easy to fine-tune the position of your tracker to whatever you want. And it avoids annoying things like having your tracker get, or cable get bumped and needing to do a complete recalibration to make it work again. Here's a good look at my current camera setup. You can see on the top I have my Retracker Bliss, and it has a cable coming out of it to take the tracking data back to my computer. There's also a cable for video, and another cable to keep the camera charged so I don't have to worry about batteries. Let's take a look at the side view. You can see my camera is in a metal cage, which has a lot of screw holes that are really handy for mounting accessories like lights, microphones, and trackers without overloading the one hot shoe you have on your camera. I've got a metal top handle attached to the top of the cage, which is handy for carrying the camera and mounting accessories like the tracker that's on here. Here on the side of the cage, I've got a cable clamp that holds all my cables and acts as a strain relief so they won't get yanked on and pull off the camera. As I turn this, you can see the nice thing about that handle is that it mounts my tracker directly above the center line of the lens, which helps a lot. And here you can see the main reason I use that cable clamp. Almost all cameras of this kind use a micro HDMI plug. These things are very fragile, pull out easily, and can even be damaged. So that strain relief clamp prevents that from happening. Overall, using a cage like this and these parts gives you a nice solid mount for your tracker that's not going to move by accident. Everything is very easy to adjust, it stays put, 
and it can be assembled and disassembled easily. If you don't want to go the full cage route, you can get a top handle like this one that connects to the shoe on top of your camera. It's not quite as rugged as a full cage, but it'll get the job done. I still recommend people get a cage though. It's such a great platform for accessories like handles for handheld shooting, batteries to extend the runtime of your camera if you're shooting handheld, microphones, monitors, wireless mic receivers, and all sorts of other stuff. You can get something very elaborate without having to worry about collapsing your camera under the weight of it all. You can start out with a basic cage kit for under $100 and then add this other stuff on as you need it. So you don't have to make a big investment all at once, but if you want you can end up with a real beast of a camera system that you can shoot from your shoulder. This is a lot like my advice to get a good tripod for your camera. Don't go out and spend a lot of money on an expensive camera and lens and then trust it all to a $20 cheap tripod. It's just not a good idea. All the parts I've shown you are from a company called Small Rig in China. They make very good stuff. I have no complaints. You can order directly from their website in China and it takes a little bit longer, but the parts are cheaper that way. Or you can buy them from Amazon if you're in a hurry. There are plenty of other companies that make cages and accessories just like this. Just look up camera cage or camera rig on Google and you'll find them. I just happened to use small rig because it was the one I started using and I liked it. I hope you found this information useful. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you did. It really helps the channel out and I'll try to answer your questions in the comments as quickly as I can. In the meantime, I hope you're having fun learning virtual production. That's all for now. I'll see you next time.